Too much electricity will kill you. Just ask this guy. Well, maybe not this guy. But what if we said that electricity could stop your pain without resorting to the electric chair? Good news. There's a natural pain solution that won't leave you addicted to prescription drugs, reliant on surgery, or imprisoned in bed. Right now, millions of people are living pain-free thanks to electrical therapy. And while electrical therapy devices are changing lives all over the world, little is actually known of its history. And that's where we come in. We're covering everything electrical therapy from the Romans through today. Because for all the effort spent looking for a solution to pain, we might have been better off wrestling Zeus for the rights to electricity. But there's a good reason why electrotherapy units are commonplace in doctors' offices and patients' homes. And we truly have come a long way. Here's how we got there. Let's rewind to 46 AD, back when all medicine was natural. After getting zapped by torpedo fish in the Mediterranean Sea, the Romans had a major breakthrough. Electricity reduces pain in humans. They certainly didn't understand why, but Roman physician Scribonius Largus treated Emperor Claudius Gout by making him stand on a torpedo fish, which is actually an electric stingray. So it's safe to assume Claudius must have been in some serious pain. But when Rome fell, most of its medical history fell with it, much to the relief of torpedo fish everywhere. Phew. Electrical therapy isn't mentioned during the Dark Ages, but it likely died out entirely, along with a lot of people who probably needed it. Best not to dwell on the past. Let's jump forward a thousand years, more or less, to when electrical therapy resurfaced with the father of electricity, Benjamin Franklin. Good old Ben, genius that he was, flew his kite in a thunderstorm and discovered that lightning and electricity are the same thing. Meanwhile in Europe, scientists were rediscovering that electricity could treat pain. Ben decided to test their theories and started zapping people with low voltages to treat cramps and convulsions. He also reported treating his neighbor for frozen shoulder. This brings us to doctors Kruger and Kratzenstein in 1744. Calling it a new kind of cure, Doc Kruger's theories about how electricity worked were on the mark. However, his experiments were limited by the technology at the time. His student Dr. Kratzenstein believed in electricity too and claimed to have shot the paralysis out of a woman's finger. Yes, he had that electric touch. <laughs> Never mind. It took a few centuries, but Kruger and Kratzenstein finally got their due credit after university studies tested electrical therapy with paralysis patients. Back to 1780, when Italian professor Dr. Luigi Garbani sat a set of frog legs at the University of Bologna and observed that frogs' muscles twitched when electrified. Aha! Electricity causes muscles to move. No one knew it yet, but Galvani had initiated one of biology's biggest breakthroughs, that our bodies are actually electrochemical machines. Unfortunately for Galvani, he died alone and impoverished after being outcast by Italy's conquerors. But we have our own theories about what happened. Conjecture aside, by the 1820s, Dr. Golding Bird had founded the first electrical therapy department at a hospital in London. Until this point, scientists had experimented with static electricity, but it proved unstable and uncontrollable. Thankfully, galvanic or direct current machines replaced static electricity and proved a lot easier to use, which was great because in 1891, along came Nikola Tesla with new research on electrical currents as a remedy for pain. Think of Tesla as the 19th century Iron Man. As one of the world's leading electrical engineers, he developed alternating currents, which is what anything connected to a power outlet uses. Tesla liked electrical therapy so much that he even treated himself with it, alone, in his hotel room, after getting hit by a taxi. Talk about a shock in recovery. Sorry, we just can't help ourselves. If you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Not to be outdone by his former assistant, Thomas Edison began researching electrical therapy as well. This war of the minds produced a lot of breakthroughs, including Edison's electrical anesthetic machine. His invention was powerful enough to use during surgery, although historians still view it as one of his lesser breakthroughs. Until now, doctors had just blasted people with electricity. But unfortunately, that's not how our bodies work. By the late 19th century, there was still no finesse, no way to target pain. That's where 20th century innovators like Dr. Albert Abrams and Georges Lakowski came in. They discovered that different types of human cells resonated at specific electrical frequencies. Therefore, if we could control the frequency, doctors could target specific types of pain. Meanwhile, in Germany, scientists were modifying their devices to pulse instead of running continuously, which fixed the heat buildup from constant use and made getting electrocuted more tolerable. 
Which brings us to 1938, when electrical therapy clinics sprouted up across the United States thanks to Dr. Royal Rife. Keep in mind, this guy won 14 government awards for his scientific achievements, including the universal microscope. Thanks to Rife, electrical therapy took a huge leap forward as a system for pain management. And like many scientists, Rife lived the life of a rock star. Success, recognition, national acclaim. Then his lab mysteriously burned to the ground. With his work destroyed, Rife was left to die lonely and depressed. Some blame competitors, some blame the government, but authorities never did find out who sabotaged his work. Next in our electric lineup, see what we did there, is Dr. Reinhard Voll. A decade after Rife, Dr. Voll developed a technique called electroacupuncture. Voll theorized that by electrifying acupuncture points, we could communicate with our nervous system, thereby giving it instructions. It's a widely recognized pain management technique still in use in over 25,000 medical practices worldwide. Regardless of its practicality, using electricity as a stimuli held merit. NASA even backed his research, and Vol went on to win the Vatican Gold Medal. Cue the Cold War. The space race, east and west, the Ruskies versus the Yanks. Who blinks first? Nuclear destruction. Who has the more efficient and effective electrical therapy device? Stay tuned. During the space race, the Russians improved upon the works of Tesla, Vol, Rife, and Larkovsky. By expanding the frequency range and improving the pulse speeds, the Russians developed a device that helped their cosmonauts fight the effects of weightlessness in space. They discovered this same technology proved useful in soothing pain as well. Kind of like an all-in-one electrical medicine cabinet. What's the Russian secret weapon in fact? Not a nuclear bomb, but their electrical therapy technology. The 76 US Olympic weightlifting team certainly thought so. They even lodged a complaint against the Russian Olympic weightlifters for using electrical therapy to increase strength while speeding up workout recovery. Afraid of falling behind the Russians in medical breakthroughs as well as everything else, Americans took notice and began developing their own devices. This led to the FDA clearing transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation devices. The FDA classified electrotherapy as a viable treatment for pain, finally establishing the same technology that ultimately led to the pacemaker. Electrotherapy was here to stay. Up to this point, scientists had observed the effects of electricity in relieving pain. Now they finally had the tools to discern how and why electrical therapy was effective. The pain gate theory might sound like a Stephen King book, but it's actually a major milestone in the history of electrical therapy. Thanks to the work of Dr. Melzack and David Wall, it turns out that pain comes from a nervous system reacting with the nerves in our body, controlled by gates. Electricity effectively closes these gates, preventing pain signals from reaching the brain. And boom! Now we have an idea of how electrical therapy worked. Modern medicine was catching up with technical innovations from some of history's greatest minds. And in 1991, Bert Sackman and Erwin Neyer won the Nobel Prize for discovering that electricity can increase a cell's iron pump exchange by up to 500%. We didn't understand it at first either. But basically, your cells each have an electric powertrain warranty until the day you expire, meaning the correct electric jolt is a good thing. In fact, our quest has led to some unlikely discoveries. By 2004, a US-based company brought together top biomedical researchers from the former Soviet space program, Germany and the United States. They figured out how to combine the breakthroughs of past innovators all into one device. They named it the Wellness Pro. It was recognized by the FDA in 2007, followed by other regulatory agencies around the world. What was different, you ask? Thanks to the insanity and courage of past innovators, the Wellness Pro introduced a breakthrough algorithm of rotating frequencies, allowing it to target various types of pain. This allows users to literally turn pain off, like a light switch. Which brings us to the present, and truth be told, it's a rather bleak state of affairs. In 2013 alone, the CDC reported almost 1.9 million Americans were addicted to prescription pain medications. 40 of those people die every day. In 2014, 40% more Americans died from painkillers than car accidents. This caused the CDC to release a nationwide warning in 2016 about opiate-based painkillers. But thanks to electrical therapy, there's now hope for people dealing with chronic pain without the life-threatening side effects. Electrotherapy, or TENS units, 
have different names and come in all shapes and sizes. But if history has taught us anything, it's that arbitrarily electrocuting yourself produces varied results. Not all TENS units are created equal. Healthy and diseased cells have distinct electrical properties, so you need a device that can be customized to your specific type of pain, including diseases like diabetic neuropathy, arthritis, Lyme disease and more. Much like the human genome, thanks to continued research and innovation, we're getting closer to cracking the human body's electrical code. We now know that the most effective electrical therapy unit is not the one with the most bells and whistles. It's the one that makes you feel better. Units like the Wellness Pro are made of more than just the latest technology. They're also made of equal parts insanity, hope and perseverance in the face of setbacks. The dreams of countless pioneers are part of the units we now use to treat chronic pain. The devices themselves representing humanity's unwillingness to compromise in the face of suffering. And after centuries of progress, it's finally time to share this breakthrough with the world.